You may be seated. Hear the word of grace that is offered through Jesus Christ, where Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I died and behold, I am alive forevermore. And I hold the keys of hell and death. Because I live, you shall live also. Friends, we are gathered here to praise God and to witness to our faith as we celebrate the life of Sergeant Philip Dale Nix. We come together in grief, acknowledging our human loss. And we ask that God may grant us grace, that in our pain we may find comfort, in our sorrow we may find hope, and yes, even in death, we will find the resurrection. Let us pray. Eternal God, we praise you for the great company of all those who have finished their course in faith and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially we praise you for Dale Nix, whom you have graciously received into your holy presence. To all of these, grant your peace. Let perpetual light shine upon them and help us so to believe where we have not seen that your presence may lead us through our years and bring us at last with them into the joy of your home, not made with hands, but eternal in the heavens. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Many of you gathered here probably were taught the 23rd Psalm, something you may have been taught in class or maybe by your parents or grandparents or a Sunday school teacher. And so as I read the 23rd Psalm, if you feel led to do so to join me, I would be honored to have you join me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Good afternoon. My name is Sonia Desai, and I am the manager at the Guilford County Family Justice Center in Greensboro. I first met Sergeant Nix almost 16 years ago in CID over at the MMOB building. You old schoolers know exactly where that is. I was the victim advocate, and he was a fraud detective at the time. I referred to Sergeant Nix as the guy with the cool hair. However, it was six years ago when he was assigned to the Family Victims Unit as the Sergeant at the Guilford County Family Justice Center is when our friendship began. During this message, I will refer to Sergeant Nix as Dale because that is how I knew him. Dale and I were instant friends when we walked through the doors of the Family Justice Center. We were inseparable, and it was rare that you would see one of us without the other. 
We had many conversations about our Jeeps, Kelly and Will, and the books that he was reading. In fact, one day he came to me and said, hey buddy, I've had to switch up my reading place. You see, up until a few years ago, you could find Dale at the Starbucks, drinking a cup of coffee at Quaker Village, across from Guilford College, reading his book. So when I asked him, well, why do you need to change your reading spot? And he quickly replied in that stern voice that he had, well, Sonia, there's just too many liberals out there. <laughs> Here's the thing about Dale. Here's the thing about Dale. He could get along with anyone. People were drawn to him because they knew he genuinely cared. He considered all helpers to be family. He believed in the servant's heart. He was very opinionated. He would always respect the opposing argument, but it was really difficult to sway him. I thought to myself over the past few days, huh, I know a lot about Dale but I had no idea what kind of music he listened to. You see, any time we rode out together in his car, he always put conservative talk radio on for me. <laughs> we were so different from different walks of life, but we had so many similarities. One of the many things that Dale and I have in common was our values and beliefs around victimization and crime. We both felt strongly about keeping victims safe and holding offenders accountable for the violent crimes that they have committed. We did this through our high-risk case review, attending first appearances so that we could get high bonds, and assisting clients with their needs. It was often that Dale would sit with victims of abuse and look them in the eye and say, you got this, you do not deserve to be hurt your life matters. Dale would often say that I acted more like a cop and he was more of a victim advocate. He had a presence that could calm a victim down in a heartbeat. Me, on the other hand, was all about catching bad guys. I would say to Dale, hey, can we just go after that bad guy? I'm sure it's fine to break down the door and just go in and get him. And he would say, Sonia, have you heard of this thing called probable cause? What a technicality. <laughs> to the Family Victims Unit. He loved being with you. He loved mentoring you. He was already so proud of you. But after these past few days, I know that he would have been so, so proud. He absolutely adored you. To the Family Justice Center. Boy, did we drive him crazy. Dale loved you. He taught us what it meant to be part of a larger family whose mission was to do good in the world. Will, he was so proud of you. The day you got your driver's permit, he called me and exclaimed, he did it. He told me everything that you were doing to your Jeep and the things that, and the things that you were going to do to your Jeep. And he was so excited about you playing lacrosse. Watch out, Northwest lacrosse team. You just gained about a thousand fans. And finally, I know you and your dad talked about being counselors at Camp Hope. Will, you will be there. I cannot think of a better way for you to honor your dad's legacy than working with youth who have been impacted by trauma and abuse. You will make a fine counselor. Kelly, he loved you deeply and fierce just the way that you loved him. It was so apparent because he talked about you all of the time. He loved your family dinner nights at Stoke Ridge Tavern. 
Every home project he ever completed was because he wanted your home to be your sanctuary. He often referred to you, Will, and him being a team. You told us that he would often say, it's us against the world. I wish you were standing where I am standing right now. I see a sea of blue. I see a sea of love. I see love, so much love. It is a glorious sight up here. Let me be clear, it is now all of us against the world. We got you guys. And finally, Dale and I presented together many times. This past year, we were lucky and honored to present on the national stage at the Alliance for Hope Family Justice Conference in San Diego. We were presenting on high-risk teams and highlighting the good work in Guilford County. Typically, we would introduce each other. So he would introduce me and I would introduce him. In fact, the last time he introduced me, he, intro he said all these really great things about me, um, which I was like, this is great. <laughs> but he introduced me as his best friend. Please allow me to introduce Sergeant Dale Nix one last time. Sergeant Dale Nix was a 22-year veteran of the Greensboro Police Department. Sergeant Dale Nix began his public service career as a 911 telecommunicator. Sergeant Dale Nix was a financial crimes detective, patrol corporal, patrol sergeant, and police training officer. Sergeant Dale Nix was a team leader for the Greensboro Police Department's Honor Guard. Sergeant Dale Nix was a member of the peer support team. Sergeant Dale Nix was the detective sergeant of the Family Victims Unit at the Guilford County Family Justice Center. Sergeant Dale Nix was a member of the High Risk Case Team Review, Elder Justice Leadership Team, Child Fatality Review, and so many more. Sergeant Dale Nix was a national presenter and trainer. Sergeant Dale Nix was a best friend to all. Sergeant Dale Nix was a loving husband and father and of his family. And finally, Sergeant Dale Nix confronted evil so he could protect us. Sergeant Dale Nix was a patriot. Sergeant Dale Nix is the definition of what it means to be a cop in America. Sergeant Dale Nix. My name is Katherine Johnson and I'm the director of the Guilford County Family Justice Center. As you just heard in Sonia's stories about friendship and shared passion, Sergeant Nix's extensive policing experience coupled with an undeniable commitment to serving his community especially the vulnerable. Victims of child abuse, domestic violence, sexual assault, and elder abuse. He charted a new era for our Family Justice Center, community, and nation. Sergeant Nix was transformational. The think outside of the box vision of Sergeant Nix's mentor and longtime friend, retired Greensboro Police Captain Karen Walters, about how police should integrate with other agencies to increase victim safety, enhance offender accountability, became a reality under Sergeant Nix's leadership. As true leaders translate a vision into leaders, translate a vision into reality. Now, the Alliance for Hope International President and CEO, who is with us here today, Casey Gwynn, along with other national leaders who love Dale, and they're seated with our Family Justice family, often says there's a fine line between a vision and a hallucination when you're growing a Family Justice Center. <laughs> well, you see, Sergeant Nix and I were known to get fired up, and we could come up with lots of big ideas. On more than one occasion, Sonia would look at us and say, y'all need to calm down. <laughs> we would laugh, but 
collectively, we all understood that true collaboration and community change takes grit, dedication to service, and the ability to see a vision beyond oneself and one singular organization. Sergeant Nix not only understood the mission of the Family Justice Center, he lived it. He became the driving force for how Family Justice Center partners in advocacy, legal services, social work, medical, mental health, worked with law enforcement. He knew that to make the most significant impact on the public health and safety of our community, that our FJC would need to be a family. A family that no matter what, stands with one another for the greater good, a family that works together to solve complex and complicated issues that are so often a part of working with victims of abuse, a job most folks don't want to do. Sergeant Nix loved the job. He took great pride in being and holding the title of the longest serving sergeant of the Family Victims Unit. He built a team that when he started, he was begging folks to join his unit to a team that now has a waiting list of officers wanting to be an FVU at the FJC. As the first director of the Guilford County Family Justice Center, I often laughed with Sergeant Nix over the years that after he drank the Family Justice Center Kool-Aid, I sometimes thought he loved the Family Justice Center more than I did. When we worked together, presented, consulted, trained, collaborated, problem solved, you couldn't tell he worked for the city of Greensboro and I worked for Guilford County. We worked as one. And that was true no matter the person he worked with within our partnership. His leadership was profound. He had an impact on the thousands of lives that he saved, not only here in Greensboro, but nationwide. He taught law enforcement officers from all over about high-risk teams and understanding the lethality of strangulation, creating a life-saving ripple effect for survivors in crisis. In addition, he was known for going on the front lines, connecting directly with survivors and becoming their biggest champion, their hero. He had an unbelievable ability to make you feel seen and heard. And over the past week, survivors have called and messaged our team and said things like, I met Sergeant Nix on the worst day of my life. I still remember how compassionate and encouraging he was at such a horrible time. He later testified in my trial in support of me and my family. He changed my life. Another survivor shared, Sergeant Nix gave me courage when I had none. I was so afraid of my abuser. I was also so nervous about working with police because of my past. But when I came to the Family Justice Center and he walked into the room, I immediately felt safe. He was so kind and compassionate, he was the best. He went above and beyond to care for my family. He became my family. You see, Sergeant Nix's always showed up with a fiery passion that was contagious. He was vigilant for justice, supporting a victim on their darkest days and sticking with them throughout their healing journey while doing whatever he could with Sonia to get a high bond and a conviction of an offender who did wrong. It wasn't his position in the Greensboro Police Department that made him powerful. It was his passion a passion that propelled the Greensboro Police Department on the state and national stage for things like successful partnerships with law enforcement and family justice centers, establishing high-risk teams, and building effective elder abuse collaboratives. So where do we go from here? How do we ensure Sergeant Nix's legacy lasts, and what have we learned from his heroism? For Sergeant Nix, there were no limits and no scripted box. He had the highest level of integrity and loyalty, always doing the right thing and bringing others along with him. He would often say, put his hands in his pocket, almost roll his eyes, and say, let's be honest, Catherine. If I only asked cops how to solve a problem, I would only get a cop solution. But if I asked that advocate and the, and the attorney and talk with the victim and a social worker, I get a much bigger picture of the problem and a much better solution. He was a master at breaking down walls and silos 
and the times that are upon us now, there is no greater way to uphold the legacy and honor of Sergeant Nix. Kelly and Will, our partners will take it from here. We will continue the work of the Family Justice Center, a place that Sergeant Nix called a second home. We will continue to drive the changes that he started and initiated at the same level of intensity and passion and hold tight to the work he loved so well. We will honor him for our lifetime and beyond. I want to close with a story, and I have to use Dale because this is a Dale story, not a Sergeant Nick story. As, as Sonia mentioned briefly, the Family Justice Center has a program for youth who've been impacted by domestic violence and trauma called Camp Hope America. We started this program eight years ago, and it's grown exponentially. Camp Hope offers an early intervention for youth who are exposed to violence and abuse, giving them a different pathway towards hope and healing, breaking the cycles of abuse that so many families face. In our field, and Sergeant Nix believed this, we believe that this is the most powerful crime prevention initiative and the most effective type of criminal justice reform. FJC partners like law enforcement refer families to our week of overnight camp and year-round mentoring, and Sergeant Nix, he always had referrals. And that was because he maintained such effective and long-term meaningful relationships with families. So referrals came easy and he remained invested with the families that he served. Each October, we host a carnival night, a Camp Hope Carnival night at the Family Justice Center in Greensboro. And families are invited, our partners come along, they bring their kids. Uh, partners are invited to wear a costume and dress up and have activities and games. The Greensboro Police Department's Family Victims Unit takes this event very serious. From elaborate costumes to decorating offices and hallways, this event brings helpers and families together in meaningful ways. This year, Sergeant Nix dressed up as the Star Wars character Obi-Wan Kenobi. When talking with Will this week, I asked him, hey, Will, does your dad like Star Wars? And he replied, oh, yes. And I don't know anything about Star Wars, so I had to do a little digging to learn about this character, Obi-Wan Kenobi, and to discern if there was a possible connection between uh, Dale and his costume of choice. In the movie, A New Hope, Obi-Wan Kenobi knows his time on Earth is coming to an end. He is working to infuse as much as he can in those he loves and cares for. And one of his most famous quotes is, If you strike me down, I will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Obi-Wan sacrificed his life for the greater good, and he knew the impact and that his greatness would have for generations to come. I don't believe in coincidences. I believe that God prepares us and reminds us of his mercy and grace in the most unlikely and even darkest of times. Sergeant Nix instilled his passionate power in all of us. He sacrificed his life to save others, his life for the greater good. He knew we had it in us to continue on even after his untimely death. May we use the power and wisdom he gave us to fight for justice, protect victims, hold offenders accountable, and be the kind of leaders that put collaborative solutions above individual agendas. And may we always take care of our family. My name is Caroline Holliday, and I've known Dale for almost 24 years. I met Dale around 2000, several months before our academy, when we were both pre-hires. 
Our paths crossed and we crossed and we immediately found we had a lot in common and were anxiously excited about starting our careers in law enforcement. We are proud members of the 79th PBIC. Dale's love for this career, his passion for making this community that he had grown up in a better place, and his leadership qualities were obvious from the beginning. He was a squad leader and someone we knew we could go to to be the gap between our class and our command staff. Dale was also part gazelle. That boy could fly. He and Kevin McNeil would uh, battle back and forth for fastest time on the Popat obstacle course. Our careers took us to different districts and squads, but we found ourselves reunited in the investigative division in 2009. Dale always knew he wanted to be a detective and one day a supervisor in the division. Now he thought it would be in fraud, but as our careers often do, an unexpected door opened. That door was to the Family Victims Unit and the Family Justice Center. There's not enough time to go into all that Dale has meant to our unit and the FJC, although I think you know that now after listening to Catherine and Sonia. But know this, those shoes will never be able to be filled. When I came to the unit almost five years ago, Dale was a familiar friend and I looked forward to working with him. He was the voice of reason I needed on numerous occasions when I would get fired up about something and he would reel me back in. I can't tell you how many times I would go to him at a level 100 about something and then in his most calm and diplomatic voice, yet often agreeing with me at the same time, he would bring me back down to earth and help me solve the issue at hand. He was also my go-to in talking about the good old days. We remember so many of the same things and people, and I'll miss those chats along with a thousand other things. There's so many funny stories I could tell, but I have felt called to share something different. All of us have a hard time understanding this tragedy. I have heard people ask, where was God, or why did this tragedy happen? I can't answer the why, but I can tell you with all certainty that God was there. He sent an earthly angel in the name of off-duty officer Cameron Peach and an EMS medic just filling up with gas. Cameron is a veteran officer with almost his whole career on our SWAT team and many years on the traffic unit where he has seen and responded to some of the most tragic and critical incidents. God had prepared Cameron for this moment in time. He was there by Dale's side in a matter of seconds. Dale had a friend in his last moments. He was not alone. Cameron later told me he and his wife weren't even intentionally at that sheets. They had gone in search of something at a different sheets and just so happened to be at this sheets in search of that item. You will never convince me God didn't send Cameron and his wife to that sheets at that time for that purpose. Theologian and pastor John Piper once gave a powerful message on 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18, which I will read first. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what, is, on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. He goes on to preach. Not only is all your affliction momentary, not only is all your affliction light in comparison to eternity and the glory there, but all of it is totally meaningful. Every millisecond of your pain from the fallen nature or the fall of man, every millisecond of your misery in the path of obedience is producing a peculiar glory you will get because of that. I don't care if it was cancer or criticism, slander or sickness. It wasn't meaningless. It's doing something. It's not meaningless. Of course you can't see what it's doing. Don't look to what is seen when your mom dies, when your kid dies, when you've got cancer at 40. Don't say it's meaningless. It's not. It's working for you an eternal weight of glory. Therefore, therefore, 
Do not lose heart. But take these truths and day by day focus on them. Preach them to yourself in the morning. Get alone with God and preach his word into your mind until your heart sings with confidence that you are new and cared for. In closing, I want to share something I wrote while sitting in a deer stand a few days after Dale died. Alone with my thoughts of my friend and a pain in my heart, this is what came out. Grief comes in waves, like the ocean. Some days the waves just wash up, barely making a noise. Then other days they come crashing down, and often unexpectedly. A thought or a memory or the thought of never seeing him again and the tears just come rushing out. It's a gut punch you know you need to feel in order to start the healing process. I've heard the hole never closes, but time helps the jagged edges of that hole not feel so sharp. My spiritual dad once told me when I was going through a really dark time, he said, we must cry and grieve, but to give those tears back to the Lord. He said, don't you give one drop to the enemy. The enemy wants us to fall into the pit of despair and hopelessness, but Dale wouldn't want that for us. The enemy wants us to doubt God's love and sovereignty. Why was such a good man taken so soon and in such a tragic way? I don't know. But I know Jesus experienced everything on earth that we have experienced. I can point you to the truths of the Bible which have helped me through my darkest hours, this being one of them. But honestly, the peace and hope I find in God is hard to put into words unless I tell you my life story. How do we go back to work and not see him every day? How do we go and fight for victims when the fight has been sucked out of us? I really don't know. But I know I work with a great group of men and women that will surround each other with love and support. Besides the military and fire, I'm not sure there's another profession that understands our camaraderie. So we will carry the torch he has carried, being the light for so many. He taught us well. We will sit at our lunch table and continue to laugh at inappropriate things because it's how we cope and it's what he would want us to do. His light and his legacy will live on. Dale, I miss you so much, but you're with our Savior and resting easy now. Gone, but never forgotten. <clears throat> my, name, <clears throat> my name is Joshua Payne. I first met Sergeant Dale Nix when I was in career development with the Family Victims Unit. Prior to this, I had never really considered working these types of cases. Like many of us, I was more interested in going after guns and drugs than dealing with the kind of emotional baggage that comes along with this type of work. I also wasn't what many people would consider to be the most compassionate officer. I took care of our community by taking the offender to jail, and I didn't really consider my role in the victim's life past that point. However, after my first week working with Sergeant Nix and learning more about the Family Justice Center and what the Family Victims Unit actually did, he had me drinking that Kool-Aid right alongside him. He had this infectious energy about the type of work, both the criminal investigation side as well as the advocacy side, that made you truly understand how a single individual officer could have a greater positive impact on the lives of the victims. After that first week, I knew I had found my place in this department, and it was with this squad doing work worth doing. There's a poster on the wall of Sergeant Nix's office that has an image of St. Michael and the words, dispensing grace and long prison sentences. This slogan goes to the heart and goals and intentions of Sergeant Nix with everything he did. I think it's something he was pretty proud of. He was focused on both holding offenders accountable as well as helping the victims find grace and healing. I think the best example of this was how Sarge would volunteer to go to first appearance to speak on behalf of the victims who either couldn't go or who did not want to face their abuser. He would speak to the courts about the personal impact that strangulation, domestic assault, child abuse, sexual abuse had on the victims with the hope that the offenders would receive additional consideration regarding pretrial release. And you knew when a violent offender received this consideration when Sarge would come back from court with a big old smile on his face. <laughs> but more than just standing for victims, Sergeant Nix also stood for the men and women who worked with him. 
Sarge treated each of us with the utmost respect, whether you were sworn personnel, professional staff, limited duty, pre-hire, or career development. You can really see this when you look at our squad photos, which were up on the walls or up on the projectors earlier. Uh, if you look at the squad photos, you'll almost always find a person who is working career development. Inevitably, these people, these officers, would stand off to the side because they really didn't feel like they belonged in a squad photo. But Sarge was always the one to call them over and told them that as long as they're with us, they're part of the squad, they're part of this family. And he really meant that. Sergeant Nix was the best of us and was the kind of supervisor and officer that the rest of us aspire to be. That infectious energy I mentioned earlier, it motivated you to want to do more, to do better, and to be better. Sarge has created a legacy within this department that will continue through this squad and through each and every officer and person that he came in contact with or helped along the way. Sergeant Nix has left this world far too soon, but he has left it a much better place for his having been here. Sarge, we'll miss you. The hardest part about this was trying to figure out where to start. It was so hard to put into words what Sergeant Dale Nix meant to us. I've worked for, with him for almost two years, but I always go back to the first time I met him. I was in the academy, and he was a corporal on patrol. <clears throat> I did my first ride along with him. He was always smiling and never met a stranger. He spoke to people like he had known him his whole life. I think it goes without saying that Sarge showed compassion to everyone that crossed his path. Sarge is the standard for being a supervisor, but he was way more than that. He was a father figure. He was a mentor, and he was our family member. <clears throat> the Family Victims Unit spent more time with each other than we did with our actual families. On hard days, we could walk into his office and say, I need to talk to Dell Nix, not Sergeant Nix. He would make us feel like his top priority by dropping everything he was doing and giving us his full attention. He was a sounding board for our professional and personal lives. Sarge had a way of believing in us when, when, even when we didn't believe in ourselves. <clears throat> During lunch, he would consistently tell us the same war stories over and over and over. <laughs> we would listen to him like it was the first time we ever heard him. <laughs> While assigning cases, he would walk up and say, hey buddy, this one just needs a phone call or two. Well, after multiple interviews, multiple search warrants, and multiple charges later, we were able to finally close the case. He would even hand us cases and say, I saved this one for you because you're the perfect one for it. If any of us needed help with house projects, he was there to help, even if it was to put another man's bed together. <laughs> Sarge loved to give different groups of people tours around the Family Justice Center. During those tours, he would stop at each and every one of our doors and give at least a five minute bio on all of us. And it made all of us feel so awkward. <laughs> it was his proud dad moment that he was able to brag about each one of his children. I choose to remember Sarge by his smile, his leadership, and all around unselfishness. The time spent with him will never be forgotten, 
but cherished forever. Thank you. As I think of stories from the honor guard, I can tell you 100% every single one of them is inappropriate to tell you right now. <laughs> that was Dale Nix when he got behind closed doors with all of us and nobody was going to be around. So with that, I would like to share with you what Sergeant Nix meant for the team. He was dedicated. He gave us 20 plus years of service to this team. And it didn't matter if it was pouring down rain, 110 degrees, a hurricane, or 32 below zero, he was out there with us and he was the one leading the charge for us. That brings us to this next character, his leader. Again, he was the first one out there with us telling us to come on as we're all huddled in the corner, shivering, or trying to hide under the awning from the rain, he was standing out there, come follow me. When we had new members join, he was the first one to say, come over here, let's work on this step. Come over here, let's work on this. He took pride in teaching each new member something about the team and how to be a part of this team. With that, he became one of our best mentors. As you know, when we do our service, there's always one little piece that gets messed up or one little thing doesn't go right. Most of the time, people don't know it, but we do. We see every little thing. And he was there to say, hey, don't worry about it. We've got this. He was there when we needed somebody to say, you're okay. Take a breath and carry on. He was always there for everything we needed. When we've had instances where officers wanted to quit, the phone calls would show up and he would say, you've got this, take a breath, we're here for you. And then his best characteristics came together when he was our friend for everything. We've got a team member with family issues, he was there 24 seven for. We have a team member that got hurt really bad on the job. He was there, phone calls. He was there helping out as much as possible. If we need a friend, he is there. And as for my friend, uh, personally, I was able to adopt a little boy that came from a case that his unit would have investigated. And it would have been all hands on deck Every person, every advocate, every person in the FJC would have helped. And I've talked to him about this, and he was like, I think you're the family for you. Go. So when I went to pick my son up from the hospital, I was told he would never walk, talk, or feed himself. As the years went on, he did walk, he did talk, and he did feed himself. Every time training started, a new service would start. We would have another call out, promotion ceremony. I would walk up and he would like stop everything. Let's just stop. How is little man doing? He wanted to see videos, he wanted to see pictures. And as I'm having my proud dad moment showing these videos and pictures, it seemed like 
the grandpa moment would come up at him because his smile would come over his face. They would stretch from cheekbone to cheekbone. And that would show the only thing bigger than his smile was his heart for other people. I hope that we as a team can carry on that tradition with everybody else to show you how Sergeant Nix was his team. Sergeant Nix, as a team member, I just want to let you know we're here, we've got it from further, and we will honor you to the best we can.
Amen. You can hear God calling and saying, whom shall I send? And you can hear Dale saying, here I am, Lord, send me. What a servant he was. Before I begin, uh, the family wanted me to say thank you so much for all your prayers and support. The family cannot say thank you enough for all the love that has been expressed by the police family, all first responders, the Greensboro community, and so many more. They truly do feel all your prayers lifting them up during this difficult time. I want to say a special thank you to Westover Church for allowing us to have this service here. They also wanted me to say thank you to the people that were there with Dale on that tragic day, giving him comfort and support. I am humbled and honored to be here as we celebrate the life of Dale Nix. I am the pastor at Oak Ridge Methodist Church, which is a part of the Global Methodist Church. I know this might sound cliche, but Dale was a special gift from God. Everyone who was blessed to meet Dale knew that he was a special that he was special in the way that he treated you. He treated everyone with so much love and respect. His dad kept echoing to me over and over again, Dale had a good heart. Dale came from a special family that is very close to each other. They gather together every single year for Thanksgiving the Sunday before. He loved to read and work on projects around the house, especially with his son, Will. He had just finished renovating the laundry room. And during this project, Dale went over to his mom and dad's house to borrow a tool. He went into the garage where his dad was working on a birdhouse. Now, one thing that I'm learning about the Nix family is they love to pick on each other. That's how they show love is by picking. Well, Dale did not miss the opportunity to pick on his dad. As he looked at his birdhouse that looked more like a birdhouse condominium that his dad was building there in the garage, Dale looked at his dad and said, Oh, no, that's where old carpenters go to die, <laughs> building birdhouses. You can hear Dale saying that, can't you? They all had a great laugh about it. There were times when Dale needed to move things pretty heavy around the house, and he would look at his wife, Kelly, and say, I need to get the muscles. If you don't know who that is, that's his son, Will. He called the muscles. Will loved working on those projects with his dad around the house, and Dale would say, like was mentioned earlier, it's us against the world. They both enjoyed going on four-wheeler trips with the police family, too. Will, these father and son times were special moments that you will hold on and treasure forever. Another story that Dale's dad, Eddie, shared with me was that one time Dale and his brother Dan were gathering, they were with a party up at Appalachian State, and Dale was kind of working, I guess, as the bouncer at the door, and wasn't, this guy was picking on him and his voice was getting in the house, and Dale was trying to stop him. And uh, he said to Dale, I'm going to come inside. And Dale says, you're not coming inside. Well, who's going to stop me? Dale says, my bigger, younger brother. <laughs> Guy looked at him and said, well, who's that? Just then, Dan came up to the door, and Dale says, meet my bigger, younger brother. <laughs> you can imagine the conversation stopped after that. Dale was always doing things for the family. He loved to cook, especially taking spaghetti sauce that was the family recipe and making it his own, cleaning dishes, and so many things around the house. Kelly and Will shared with me that some things just magically appeared to be fixed or repaired or replaced. And I was sharing with them as I was meeting with them this week about a book called The Five Love Languages written by Gary Chapman because I felt that Dale's love language was acts of service. As I shared with Kelly, all five love languages, acts of service, words of affirmation, physical touch, giving gifts, and quality time, Kelly immediately looked at me and says, is it possible for someone to have all five love languages? Never thought about that. Because she says, Dale had all five of them. Kelly and Dale met on a blind date that her boss at the time encouraged her to go out with him. 
Kelly still wasn't sure about going out on this first date. And finally, her boss just looked at her and said, just go on a date with him. You don't have to marry him. (laughs) Well, only God knew that that first date would turn into a wonderful marriage. I have a few scriptures that the family wanted me to share with you. The first one comes from a police challenge coin that Kelly and Will shared with me. On this coin reads Psalm 84, verses 3 through 4, and it reads, Give justice to the weak and the orphan. Maintain the right of the lowly and the destitute. Rescue the weak and the needy. Deliver them from the hand of the wicked. These two scripture verses are definitely how Dale served as a police officer. His heart and passion was rooted in giving justice to the weak and the orphan. It was part of his DNA to rescue the weak and the needy, deliver them from the hand of the wicked. We will never know how completely the impact Dale had on this world and what the future impact might be for the lives that he had changed by offering his love and compassion. I think we all can agree that this violence in this world, especially the violence against police, has to stop. I told Kelly and Will about their last name and the uniqueness of it made me think about a phrase. Nix that. There are other phrases that go with it as well. But nix that makes me think, like, stop that. I wonder if we could honor Dale starting today and forevermore, that we would stand up against all violence and begin to say the phrase, nix that. Nix away all the violence. Another verse that makes me think about Dale Nix is John 15, verse 13, where Jesus says, No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Dale showed great love for his family, his police family in this community, and he laid down his life because he knew that Jesus laid down his life for us. Dale was a baptized child of God and professed Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He lived out the great commandment to love God with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength and to love others as much as you love yourself. And just like in Psalm 23 that we read earlier, God anointed the head of Dale Nix and his cup overflowed with the love, mercy, and grace of Jesus Christ. Dale believed in John 3, 16 that reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I shared with Kelly and Will about how God carries us through these difficult times in our lives, like the footprints in the sand. A man had a dream where he was walking with Jesus on the beach. He looked back and saw that sometimes there was only one set of footprints. He noticed that those times that there was one set of footprints were difficult times in his life. And the man looked at Jesus and said, why did you leave me during those hard and difficult times? As the tears were starting down the face of Jesus, Jesus said to him, those are not your footprints. Those are my footprints because I'm carrying you through those difficult times. This is the kind of relationship that Jesus wants to have with each of us. Jesus expressed this eternal relationship to his disciples before he was crucified that he says in John 14, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. I have said these things to you while I'm still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. 
Jesus begins and ends with these bookends that tells us, do not let our hearts be troubled. For many of us here this day, that is not easy right now. I've learned that grief is the same measure of how much you love that person who has passed away. To the entire family, his wife Kelly, his son Will, his parents Eddie and Sue, his brother Dan, and everyone who is grieving this day, I hope that you feel God's loving arms wrapped around you. I pray that you feel it today, tomorrow, and forevermore, and that Jesus, with his everlasting arms, will carry you through this difficult time, and that you can trust in Jesus, and that we will see our loved ones again one day, only by the mercy and the grace of Jesus Christ. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. not sure what other comments or words could be said to really uh, express the, the, the gratitude, appreciation we have for Sergeant Dale Nix. Um, hopefully some of the words I have today will comfort somebody here. Over the past two weeks of hearing stories from officers, friends, colleague, family, uh, I've learned a lot about Sergeant Nix. His family has a lengthy history of public service to include approximately 150 years of serving in the Greensboro community. Sergeant Nix didn't get into the family business of firefighting. He was the proverbial black sheep when he joined the police department and donned the black uniform. I've been told that his fire family loved to joke and uh, rib him quite a bit about becoming a police officer. Uh, I think the mom would always declare he was responsible for, for bringing donuts to the family gathering. Um, what I knew of Sergeant Nix, he could handle his own. Uh, but I hope he appreciates my small effort today on his behalf. Oftentimes, Sergeant Nix would tell people about his family history in the fire department and people would inevitably ask him why he, he chose to become a police officer. In my mind, Sergeant Nix, time and time again, would simply reply, I chose to become a police officer because firefighters need heroes too. <laughs> Sergeant Nix, I'm, I'm sure you're looking down on us now, and, and I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. We absolutely love our, our firefighter brothers and sisters and all of our first responder family. As I look around the church, I see police, fire, EMS, federal partners, state officials, community members, and so many more. And it's a reminder of the powerful legacy Sergeant Dale Nix leaves with so many of us in the community he loved, served, and protected. Sergeant Nix was a devoted guardian of the city, a beloved family member, and a cherished friend. He was an exceptional law enforcement officer with an unwavering commitment to duty. He exemplified the true essence of selfless service and sacrifice. Sergeant Nix embodied integrity, bravery, and a sense of compassion that inspired everyone around him. Sergeant Nix had a passion for his role in the Family Victims Unit, where he sought to protect the most vulnerable in our community, 
including abuse victims of all ages. They leaned on him for courage and strength in times of chaos and uncertainty. He was well respected for his commitment to preserving peace and ensuring the safety of others and for sharing his knowledge with his colleagues. Beyond the uniform, Sergeant Nix was a husband, a father, a son, brother, and a friend. He was someone who brought light and laughter into the lives of those he knew. His kindness, warmth, and genuine care for others were among the hallmarks of his character. The hallmarks of a legacy that will endure in the memories that we share, the stories we tell, and the lessons he taught us through his commitment to service. In our grief, we also want to honor and celebrate his life, a life dedicated to his family, to protecting and serving, a life of honor, compassion, selflessness, and so much more. To the family, his parents, Eddie and Sue, his wife, Kelly, and his son, Will, we extend our deepest condolences. Know that Sergeant Nix will forever be remembered as a hero, a guardian of peace, a beacon of hope, and a true embodiment of service. We will honor his memory by carrying forward the values he held dear, by continuing to work together for the betterment of our community. Thank you, Sergeant Nix, for your service, for your sacrifice, and the indelible mark you've left on our hearts. Rest in peace, brother. You will never be forgotten. Kelly, Will, Nick's family, thank you for allowing me to have this opportunity to honor a great man, a great friend, a great mentor, and a great example for all of us. Please join me in the policeman's prayer. Lord, as I prepare for my tour of duty, I pray. As I put on my shirt and pants, Cover me with your protective hand and clothe me with integrity. As I put on my shoes, guide my steps through the pitch black alleys and make me swift of foot when I per in pursuit of the fleeing felon. Help me always to walk in the path of truth. As I place my hat on my head, give me the knowledge to make swift and correct decisions and the common sense to stay within the gray lines of the law. As I place my gun on my side, help me to realize grave responsibility that goes along with it. Grant that I may never have to take another person's life, but should that day ever come, may it be in order to preserve life and never out of hatred. As I place my shield over my heart, help me to control my emotions under all circumstances but never let my heart grow so cold that I overlook the feelings of others. And always keep me within, a, within me a sense of humor, Lord, for without humor, there cannot be sanity. And one last thing, Lord, keep me by thy saving grace, 
that when my tour of duty is up in this life, my name may be written in the book of life. Amen. Together, our closing hymn, It Is Well.
Communication calling badge eight seventy three. 
Communications, calling badge 873. Communications, calling badge 873, Sergeant Dale Nix. All units, all units, badge 873, Sergeant Dale Nix has 1042 for the final time. End of watch, December 30th, 2023. Thank you for your service. We have to watch from here. Communication is clear. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have shared with us the life of Dale Nix. Before he was ours, he is yours. For all that Dale has given us to make us what we are, for that of him which lives and grows in each of us, for his life that in your love will never end, we give you thanks. As now we offer Dale back into your loving arms, Comfort us in our loneliness, strengthen us in our weakness, and give us courage to face the future unafraid. Draw those of us who remain in this life closer to one another. Make us faithful to serve one another, and give us to know that peace and joy, which is eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We ask that you will all join us outside. We will have the 21-gun salute and the playing of the taps. You will be given instructions on how to exit uh, and leave. But before we do that, will you please stand for this closing blessing? May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. My name is Kevin Wilson. I serve as 
one of the pastors here at Westover. As we are dismissed, we would like you to who are in the balcony to remain here while the first floor is dismissed to the 21 gun salute. The balcony overflow areas will be dismissed after that. To all the first responders here that serve around our state, the country, thank you for your service. To those serving in federal agencies, thank you for your service. To those who serve in our local community, Greensboro Police, Guilford County Sheriff, Greensboro Fire, EMS, and 911 Communications, thank you for your service. Our ushers will help you dismiss outside now. Thank you.